What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is I, Randy, with RTS Mobile Gaming, bringing you another fantastic Sea of Conquest video today. In today's video, we are talking about Season 2. We are doing a follow-up on the Cutthroat video I posted about a week ago. Uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out. I really explain how this particular build works in great detail. We're going to do a super high level uh, explaining how the build works. Very, very high level, very fast. Then we'll get into some additional testing. I told you in that video I would do a few more days of testing, and I have. It's been about a week. I've done this build for about two or three days out of the past week to test it and find out how it works. I've done a dozen different types of scenarios from individually attacking sea monsters to attacking people in straits to attacking people auto trading to attacking large groups of people at ports. I've done pretty much everything I could do including bosses, raids, and things like that. And I'm coming to you today with some final conclusions on the strength of the cutthroat focus damage build for Season 2. Okay? Alright, so... First, let's spend a minute talking about how the build works. As you probably know from my previous video, you are going to go ahead and use Bones. Bones is a monster. He does a ton of damage. He also provides great rage regen for his team, okay? Um, Kojo is going to do actually a pretty solid amount of damage. If he, can, if he Depending on the critical strikes that you land in this fight, Kojo may sometimes out-damage Bones and or Luna. Kojo does do decent damage, okay? Kojo provides good damage. He provides a second instance of cutthroat damage and a little bit of healing to offset it. That might end up being 5 to 10% of your damage. Gets healed back over the next 4 seconds. Um, but he still does solid damage, okay? And I'm saying that with a knife in my side because I used to hate him and now I hate him less. All right, and then Luna. Luna also does fantastic damage, okay, to single targets with low HP in the enemy fleet, and she has a chance to trigger her ultimate again every 24 seconds, okay? Um, so, a lot of single target, very high heavy hitting damage with a lot of rage regen. Then we talk about Bones' as trinket. This thing is really, really amazing. I did a trinket video the other day, but just at a high level, this provides critical strike chance. It also provides rage. When you kill an enemy with a cutthroat ship, it gives you 200 rage back to your ship. It will also give you bonus cutthroat damage for five seconds after that. This trinket really makes the build uh, actually significantly stronger. If you're trying to run this build in Season 1, you can. It'll still do damage, but having that bones trinket is really sort of bringing it to the next level. Okay, so overall performance, like I said, I did dozens of tests on this build over the past couple days to really flesh it out. I'm going to cover one report for you, maybe two reports for you here, just to show you the performance at a, at a, on a larger scale and talk from there. But if you'd like to see you know, more reports, we can do uh, an hour segment on this in a stream. I really am condensing this down to a short video for your consumption because we all have ADHD and no one can watch a longer than 10 minute video before they start swiping. Okay, let's just be real. All right, so in this particular report, I am fighting at an ink port, okay? I am fighting against a bunch of high-level 20s, okay? A couple level 31s, as you see here. Even though it shows him at full health, is because I actually killed him uh, twice in this engagement. <laughs> and it doesn't quite show it correctly if you kill someone more than once in one report. I killed a number of these people uh, more than once in this report. There might be another level 31 in here. There's another level 31. So I killed this guy, almost killed him once. I killed the other guy twice. And overall, as you can see, I took very few losses uh, in this entire battle. Okay. Now, I was doing my best to keep this fight going as long as I could. Okay. To really maximize the testing pool for you. The other thing that it does is it lets me keep up my, my burning stacks after about 15 seconds. My burning build gets to full damage output. So does my strategic build. So does my artillery build. So it really provides you a very nice balanced report versus looking at something that's like a 12 second report. Of course, Cutthroat's going to be top damage because you're going to get a couple crits and kill people. Uh, this longer report, I really think is going to be great for this discussion. Okay, so lots of enemies that were killed. Uh, let's take a look. Okay, now, as you can see here, the cutthroat damage output is actually pretty substantial. Uh, 42 million cutthroat damage compared to, uh, you know, strategic ship, which of course my strategic ship in this build setup does have Cordelia on it. Uh, but this still did pretty good damage by itself. However, the strategic ship with just under 19 million damage, artillery with just under 24 million damage, and then the burning ship with just under 79 million damage compared to cutthroat at... Uh, 4265. Okay, so if we round it up to 43, we are doing uh, definitely more than half the damage of burning and more than the other two ships combined. 
but I like this really great time-weighted average with some strong opponents mixed in because you are seeing that even though I have half of my gems for cutthroat, half my gems for burning, and I am doing my best to make cutthroat shine with Bones' as Trinket, uh, it still is not the top damage dealer for these fights, okay? These larger scale fights where it's not a one-on-one -on -one straight clash, you are seeing some of these other ships really pull ahead, okay? But this is great damage. There is no discounting the fact that I did 42,652,000 damage in this fight with the Cutthroat build. It's also really, really nice to see with Bones' additional Rage Regen plus his Rage Regen Trinket, uh, often you see the Warhammer actually out damage Bones and Kojo and Luna uh, in these shorter fights. It's nice to see a longer fight where I am getting kills, I am activating the Trinket, and I am really uh, happy to see that all three heroes actually significantly out damage the Warhammer's own abilities, which is really, really great. That's what I love to see. Uh, so this is a great time-weighted fight for you to look at, okay? <clears throat> High damage there. Let's take a look at this Stormbringer, because again, I'm splitting gems, and I'll show you this in a minute. But this is another very nicely weighted uh, weighted battle here. It's kind of going to eliminate some of the RNG. It's going to let the critical strikes really average out over time and give you a very healthy look on the build's performance uh, and actual stats, okay? So here you have Lester actually under damaging compared to Adeline. This is an asterisk on this because Adeline does have the chain of bombs trinket, which does a little bit of damage by itself. So if I put the chain of bombs on Lester, I'd have to take off the critical strike trinket that's on him. But Tanaka is the star of the show here with 31.6 million damage by himself. Okay. Uh, compared to all the cutthroat heroes, really all three heroes on the Stormbringer out damaged every one of the heroes on the Cutthroat ship, with Tanaka dealing almost more damage than all three heroes on the Cutthroat ship combined. So, in summary, I want to keep this video very short. Let me show you the gems really quick, just so you have an understanding, because I think I forgot to show you that, and I apologize. Um, the gems for this particular build are going to look like this uh, for this setup here, where I'm running 49% burning damage and 46.2% cutthroat with a bunch of crit damage here. So I'm running a very high crit damage build with very high crit chance. Okay, um, let me show you Stormbringer too, why we're at it. Let's just show you Stormbringer and then we'll close the loop on this summary, okay? Stormbringer is also using the Bones Trinket. This trinket is really, really great for Lester as well because there is no unique Lester Trinket uh, in Season 2. And Lester is also going to benefit his ship by using this trinket and generate 200 rage every time the burning ship kills somebody. So he is not going to benefit from the cutthroat damage bonus, but he is going to benefit from the critical rate and from the rage regen for his burning ship. Therefore, I'm very happy with the performance of this build. Uh, but what it does do is it does directly lower Lester's damage output. Whereas before I had Chain of Bombs on Lester himself, now I have it on Adeline, which brings her damage up. But essentially, as a whole, the ships do great work. So, if we're going to compare focus builds, and we're talking about running the Cutthroat Hybrid versus running the Strategic and Burning Hybrid build, which I previously was running, where I had a couple of gems for Strategic a couple gems for uh, burning, and I actually had, uh, of course, I had Molly on the ship, on my strategic ship instead of Cordelia. I like the overall performance of the burning strategic ship a little bit better for season two. Um, I think in season three, once we get Onimusha, we get Onimusha's trinket, I think you're going to see the tables turn a little bit, and you're going to see Cutthroat become much more valuable because of that. But today... In Season 2, we just captured the Level 7 port, so I am talking to you with an entire experience of 80-90% of the Season 2 behind me. This build is effective. It does good damage, but when I focus most of my damage on burning hybrid, okay, plus strategic for early round damage, I see better performance overall. But this build will work. As you just saw in the reports I shared, I killed multiple level 31 ships and a bunch of other support ships in a long three or four minute fight. Okay, it was a great time. It was a lot of fun. And we proved that this build is also very strong. So the takeaways from this video for you to summarize. 
While I like the other version more, it probably puts out about 10 to 15% more damage and I can run a tanky build with it that's a little bit tankier than this build. This particular build is still extremely strong in Season 2, so my opinion of this build has gone up a little bit from my previous video. I have no objections if you, as my wonderful viewers, decide to run this build. I support you 100%. Uh, but again, if you want the maximum output with maximum AoE damage and maximum survivability, Burning Strategic is the best setup for Season 2. Okay? So, I love you guys a long time. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Randy, out.